We're Matt and Diana, and we've been living full-time in our 25-foot travel trailer for two years. This is the third and final video in our RV remodel series. In the first part, we demolished the dinette and prepared the walls for painting. Then, in part two, we brightened up the RV walls with some white paint. In this video, we're adding the backsplash in the kitchen and bathroom, installing the ergonomic workspace that I custom built to fit both our needs and the RV, and revealing all the other changes that we've made along the way. So yesterday we got all the painter's tape off, and that was quite a lot of work. It took a while to put it on, and it took even longer <laughs> to take it off. We had to go around and score every line along the edge of the painter's tape, just to make sure that as we peeled the tape off, it didn't pull any of the, the paint off with it. And it worked really well. The edges have, have come out really, really smooth and really tight, but it was slow. I just, before starting this, I did not imagine that um, dealing with painter's tape would actually be the hardest part of the painting. <laughs> so anyway, we got it all done. We got all the sheets out of here, all of the, the tape as well, all gone. And we, we hit our goal of getting the mattress back in here last night. So we spent our first night back in the RV, which it felt really good actually to, yeah. be, to be back in the RV. Today we've got big plans though. So um, we started yesterday on the backsplash in the bathroom. Yep. Um, we're adding a sort of a, a peel and stick backsplash in there. We need to finish that off this morning and then we're going to move on and do the same in the kitchen. Uh, the same tiles, uh, or peel and stick tiles, which I think will really start to tie things together. Mm -hmm. After that we can get the corner trim in. Um, so we, we took down a load of the corner trim and also the trailer had like a, like a rubbery PVC Plastic. kind of plasticky uh, corner moulding in some places that was like stapled in behind the, the, the walls I guess. So we had to take all of that out to paint. Obviously we can't put it back in because we cut it to remove it. Yeah. So we've got some wooden corner trim now that we're going to be putting up. Once we've done that we can then start putting things back on the walls, particularly in the bathroom, the shelves and the, the medicine cabinet. So, so we want to finish the bathroom so that we can shower again. Yes, it's been an embarrassingly long time <laughs> since we last had a shower. So we are really, really keen to... Uh, in fact, are we like standing further apart each day? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> but no, we're really keen to, to get the, the bathroom fully kind of packed and all. And the same with the kitchen. Get the kitchen back so we can cook in there again. So uh, yeah, better get to it. Okay, so first cut then is going to be cutting a 90 degree on this one, mm -hmm. and we want to cut off this edge, don't we? Because that's yeah. the, the overlap side. So we're on the pencil line down here. Yeah. We now have a cutout. Nice. So next up, muscle bound. Yeah. And then figure out how to get this actually on onto the wall. Before painting, we had to remove all of the plastic corner trim between the ceiling and wall joints. We replaced it with new painted wood corner trim that we installed with a nailer we borrowed from our friend Courtney. Courtney is an RV renovation master, so check her out on Instagram at The Flipping Nomad for lots of great inspiration. From her Instagram bio, you can also book her for a one on one RV renovation coaching call. We could not have done this remodel without her help. finished the bathroom. The walls are painted, the corner trim is up, the cabinets are back up. We installed peel and stick backsplash with a muscle bound layer underneath it so that it sticks better. We installed all the other stuff that we had to take off for the painting like the hooks for the towels um, and the cabinets. Uh, the only thing we changed is we uh, changed the height of the hand towel uh, hook because it was way too low. We really liked this um, extra organizational um, cubby that uh, we used, so now we installed it back over the backsplash where it was before. 
We also installed a new faucet, which with the backsplash together, I think it looks pretty good. The only thing that's left is to add some caulking. So we installed a new sink faucet, but we left our um, shower head. We have an oxygenic shower head, which we've been very happy with, so we decided to keep it. It adds air to the flow, so it feels like there's more pressure without using um, more water, which is great for boondocking. The, um, the hose, though, we kept the original hose because it's a lot more flexible than the one that came with the oxygenic shower head. The back of these cabinets actually have enclosed wall that was made out of the same material as the wall and the same color. So we decided to take them off and paint them the same color as the wall color. It was hard because you had to very carefully mass around, but I'm glad we did it because it looks so much better. So the plan yesterday had been to do the bathroom backsplash and the kitchen backsplash, but we just didn't get onto the kitchen. So that is the plan for today. We're going to be using the same peel and stick tile that we used in the bathroom, again with the muscle bound adhesive layer behind it. I'm going to use that to do this entire wall down here. It is going to take us quite a while to do the backsplash today. It's fairly fiddly work and that adhesive, you've got to get it right first time. There's a few things we need to cut around. There is the outlet over here. There's also the window. So what I've done is I've taped the window from the outside to secure it. So I can remove the frame entirely on the inside. It would probably hold without that tape on the outside. That's just there so there's no extra stress on some of the sealant and things. We don't want the window falling out halfway through this upgrade. the kitchen backsplash. On one hand it seems fairly easy, you peel it off and stick to the wall and done, but in reality it is quite a lot of fiddly work. We had to get it uh, straight on the wall to get around the window and then um, around this outlet. We had to take the wrench hood off to get behind it. So it's just a lot of very carefully measured cuts, but we are happy how it turned out. After much research, we decided to install barley roller shades. The colour is Sovereign Koala, but the shades have a backing material that blocks the light. We found the best deal at the time through Costco, but lots of places sell barley blinds, so be sure to shop around for promotional offers. After measuring twice and drilling once, the blinds went up really quickly. With the painting complete and the backsplashes installed, we turned our attention to some of the trim details and building our new desk. Before I started building anything, I designed the desk and the cabinets in SketchUp. This gave me a dimension model, making it really easy to build it out of plywood and some one by material that we picked up at Home Depot. Once the desktop was assembled, we covered it with several coats of grey paint. We bought some grey fabric to recover the brown trim piece above the door. It was easy to do, we just cut it roughly to shape, stretched it over the existing fabric and stapled it on the back. 
We also tried to make new button covers, but the fabric we had chosen was too thick for the button crimping tool. For now, we've chosen to leave the screws exposed, and I think they look okay. Okay, it's still getting screwed into the wall. Okay. Nice try there. Right, now the desktop. Or do you need to screw those things? No, I want to get everything dry fitted basically in. Okay. And then when I know everything fits, then we can okay. do it. Hell yeah, look at that. Ah, oh, but the foot's in the wrong place. I did get it wrong. I can also just get there. Um, oh yeah, you could put blocking in. Piece of block there. Yeah, of course I could. I can even paint it for you. Uh, yeah, we can press slide button afterwards. For now, I'll just put the screws in that I can reach. So I test the blind mechanism. Yeah. Yep. Nice. That's a really, really good colour match, actually. when the slide falls out. The table is finally complete and there's been a lot of work that's been going on, so let's catch you up. This desk is really one of the big reasons that we did the remodel in the first place, and we had a few big goals with it. The first was we wanted plenty of workspace. We've achieved that by having this T-shaped layout on the, on the desk, but we didn't want to lose the storage space that we had before. Our old dinette under the bench seats were two big drawers and then some more storage space over near the wall. And we had all of our uh, winter clothing, our ski gear was all in there, plus extra bedding. We had a load of like hard drives and electronic stuff in there. It was really good storage. We didn't want to lose that. So as part of this build, we've incorporated uh, a cabinet on either side, which contains a drawer and two shelves. And then the center section, we have left really quite open so that we can put other big things in there. We have a couple of uh, 15 gallon totes and also Diana's yoga mat and foam roller fit under there quite nicely as well. So let's talk about how we actually built this. So this desk is completely custom built. I've never done anything like this before. I've done some basic woodworking, but not really, I guess, cabinetry is what this is. So be gentle on me. This is my first time doing something this big. We started off by designing it in SketchUp and that turned out to be a really, really good decision. Not only did it let us have very, very precise control over all of the measurements, so we were able to align all the shelf heights and the size of the drawers with a lot of the common storage things that we use, the storage bins and some of the trays. So that let us really maximize the, the use of this space here. What it also allowed us to do was make the build a lot easier. It's a fairly complex build, although it looks like just a table sitting on top of some cabinets, 
there are uh, a few little intricacies. So one of those is the power center that we have underneath. So in the center of the desk here, just underneath the desktop, we actually have two uh, AC outlets, three 12 volt outlets as well. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty complex system down there with all the wiring. We've also got a cable trough at the back, which doubles up as a space for the blind to sort of fit down into when we pull the blind down. So we had to kind of make this fairly complex design that would accommodate those two features. And I think it's come out really well. And in a big part, that was due to using SketchUp, which gave us a lot of confidence in the measurements for everything that we put together. Now, again, I've never done anything like this. So I was really doing a lot of YouTube watching and a lot of researching online to try and work out how to design these cabinets and the table so they'd be really strong, but also really light. So we were really concerned about the weight of this. Because we were able to do the design ahead of time, we sent it over to Outdoors RV and they took a look at it and said, yeah, we think you should be fine with the weight that you're putting in the slide and where you're putting it. So that gave us a lot of confidence. The build itself, we did just using raw materials that we picked up at the big box stores in town. All of the carcasses are made out of largely one by two and one by three wood. The desktop itself was the most complex piece. This is a single sheet of plywood. So the whole thing is one continuous piece. So it's about four foot from the, the window out to here. The, uh, we, we then put in these cutouts. We reinforced the plywood. So it's three quarter inch thick plywood, but we doubled it up in various key areas to give it the illusion of being double thickness, about an inch and a half thick. By only putting those ribs in certain areas, as opposed to two full sheets, it helped us to keep the weight down while also keeping it strong, and it is really strong. Then around the edge of the desk, I added a one by two red oak kind of uh, edging strip that's just given us a much kind of stronger edge to go on. This is then all being painted with a really, really durable enamel paint that we've put on top, and I think it looks really good. We've got a few other features. We've got the USB outlets in the corners, um, the, and some cable trough um, shelves, I guess. So cables plugged in underneath, can feed through underneath, and then the cables come out the back there. A few little bits like that that we added as we went along has really helped to turn this into a very, very usable desk. Coupled with these new office chairs that we've added, we've turned what was a functional dinette space that we could use for working into an incredibly valuable, useful part of our RV with this brand new workspace. It's only been a week or two since we've had it installed. Already, we are really, really enjoying this new space. When we started on this remodel, our goal was to turn this RV into a much brighter and more usable space than we already had. We've been in this RV for two years, so we'd really got a feel for what works well for us and where we thought we could improve things. Now, the most obvious change in here, maybe aside from the desk, was we decided to repaint all of the walls. Before they were kind of a textured, patterned, uh, brownish kind of color. And although they were kind of functional, they didn't show up dirt or scuff marks or things. The reality is they made the space feel smaller than it, it could have done. So we decided to paint them white. We didn't go for a pure white. At the recommendation of our friend Courtney, we tried to color match as best as we could to the ceiling. So we haven't painted the ceiling. This is how it came from the factory. We ended up going with a color called Confident White. We put on a couple of coats of a PPG Gripper primer, followed by a couple more coats of the Confident White paint that we picked up from Home Depot. It went on really well. I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. And the end result, I think, is just so much brighter than we had before. We also, at the same time, decided to recover or retrim, I guess, the slide here. So this used to be a sort of a, a gray pattern with a, a wooden trim around the edges. Although the shape is similar to what we had before, this is all actually completely brand new. We stripped off the old stuff right back to the bare wood that was underneath, and then rebuilt new panels and new edging strips all the way around, just to give it a much cleaner kind of profile and kind of make it blend in a little bit more. We didn't want it to stand out. We didn't want the slide to be as obvious. We've also swapped out the blinds. So we used to have these brown uh, kind of covered valances and sides with brown fabric roller shades or pull down shades in the middle. They were just not that good. They didn't really do much uh, to block the light. Uh, strange as that sounds, uh, plenty of light could get through and they were quite bulky. The valances came out a, a long way from the wall 
and again, just made the space feel smaller. So we've swapped them out for these roller shades. These roller shades are by Bali. You can buy them at Home Depot, but we actually chose to buy them from Costco because that's where we found them the cheapest. They were super, super easy to install. They do sit a little further from the wall than maybe I would have liked, but fortunately we ordered them deliberately oversized. There's a big overhang of three or four inches past the side of the window, and they are so much better at blocking the light than what we had before. The large window blind uh, is obviously something that slides down into the table, and that gives that one a really, really seamless effect when it's down. Really pleased with those. We also changed the light. We had a fairly simple ceiling light fixture here before, and we swapped that out for this triple spotlight uh, system. We bought this on Amazon, and it was designed to run on 110 volts, but we made some simple changes to the wiring and installed some 12 volt bulbs, so now the whole thing runs off 12 volts. The old light actually had a switch on the fixture itself, which was always kind of a pain to use. We'd have to reach up and, and so sort of press the button there rather than having it on the wall or something else. We've now changed that and as part of installing this desk, we've installed a switch underneath the desk so that we can turn the light on and off from there. Furthermore, it's actually hooked in as are all the lights in our RV now to our home automation system so we can use our voice to control the lights. For example, hey Google, turn off the office lights. All right, turning office lights off. So we have the same capability on all of the lights in our RV. That's been a really, really nice feature. There's a few things in the RV that we made a conscious decision not to change. One of those was the curtain. We originally looked at swapping it out for maybe like a gray, something that would blend in with the blinds or the table a bit more, but the options we found just seemed expensive for what they were. And honestly, it's not been a problem. It works fine. It's a, a kind of a close enough match anyway to the wall color, uh, wall color that I think it just works okay. If in future we change our mind and we decide we do want a new curtain, it's easily done in the future anyway. Another thing that we didn't change was the carpet. The slide has carpet on, which helps to blend the transition between the slide and the, the main, main floor in the RV. We did look at swapping it out for uh, maybe a lower pile carpet that might work better with the, the office chairs. We decided not to in the end, it just seemed like a lot of work. And again, it's something that we can just cut around the cabinets and remove this carpet, replace it with a different one if we want to in future, but we just didn't feel it was worth the effort of swapping out. We did, however, invest $20 in renting a carpet cleaning machine uh, from a local cleaning store. We used that uh, yesterday, in fact, and it did an amazing job of cleaning the carpet here. So for now, I think the carpet can stay as well. We made a number of changes in the kitchen area as well, the most obvious of which may be this backsplash that we installed. Previously, the wall was just like a brown covering on the wall, and we replaced it with this peel and stick backsplash from Home Depot that we've attached with a product called Musclebound to really help it stay uh, very, very strongly adhered to the wall. It was fairly tricky to install because it is so sticky, but I think the end result is really, really good. The gray and the white kind of pattern, I think is just much brighter than what we had before and helps tie this area in with the office area that we built as well. I think it also goes nicely with the faucet that we installed about a year ago with our drinking water filter as well. Overall, I think it's just really brightened up this area. To kind of help it with the brightness, we've also swapped out the bulbs in the pancake light here and the stove hood as well. We haven't changed the lights themselves, just the bulbs inside, and I swapped them out to some higher power and more daylight uh, looking LED bulbs. These are just easy drop-in replacements, but they really helped to brighten up the space and removed that kind of warm yellow look that we just didn't want here in the kitchen. We wanted a light over here. We also changed out all of the cabinet hardware on every door and drawer around the RV. The, we kept with the rubbed bronze because we chose not to paint the cabinets. We quite like the wood cabinets and they're good quality, so we wanted to keep those. It was just the hardware that we didn't like. The old ones were bars, and they kind of stuck out on the ends, and particularly the ones that were kind of like on the lower cabinets, they would grab my shorts every time I walked past. So I was really, really pleased to swap those out. These are just nice and simple. Again, picked them up at Home Depot, and I think they look pretty good. Another thing that we did while we were here in the kitchen is we changed out the trim above the door. Before, this was like a brown leather type kind of thing that was in there, 
and with the new color scheme, kind of the gray on the blinds and the uh, the desk and things, it just kind of made sense to swap that out to, to something matching as well. So all we did was just recover the existing one with some new fabric. The last change we made in the kitchen is of course the blind. We didn't go with barley for this one. Uh, the RV before had a white horizontal slat blind, not too dissimilar to this one, and we liked the overall style. There's a couple of things that we didn't like. We didn't like the thickness of the actual slats themselves. They were made of really, really thin metal, and it was honestly really hard to clean the blind without damaging those slats. Just wiping them was enough to bend them sometimes. Secondly, we wanted it to cover the window a bit more, and we wanted to go for a slightly different color. So instead we've gone for this Hunter Douglas horizontal slat blind in kind of like a brushed steel color, I guess it is. It's a, like a shiny gray. And we haven't put the mounts on the bottom to hold it to the wall. We just never used the blind because it was always fixed against the wall there. So we've left those off this time. Overall, I think this blind does a great job of just blending into the wall. And overall, just the kitchen, I think, looks so much better than it did before. Lastly, we are in the bathroom now. The changes we made in here really just carried on a lot of the things from the rest of the RV. We painted all of the walls in here into the same confident white that we used elsewhere. We also added the backsplash to match the kitchen as well, which I think has done a great job of kind of blending the different areas of the RV in together. After we had painted everything in here, we added some corner trim, and we also took the opportunity to add new sealant all the way around the shower and the basin as well. I think that just is a general maintenance thing that you should do anyway from time to time, but this was a perfect opportunity to do it. The last thing that we did in here was to change the faucet. We've added a new bathroom faucet, changed out the old rubbed bronze one to this one here. It's a, a brush nickel style, uh, same style of, of handles and things, but just a, a slightly nicer design. It sits just a little bit higher than the old one, which makes this fairly small sink a bit more usable. This space in general here now feels so much brighter it's not a big space, and therefore anything you can do to make it feel bigger, I think really, really helps. So there you have it, our brand new remodel of the RV. The majority of the work we did in just a few days, all the painting and things, but overall we probably spent about a month working on this, just a few hours here and there, just because we had other things going on as well, and we were just trying to get some work done and things. It was pretty hard work, uh, I'm not gonna lie, there was a lot of time that we did put into this, especially the desk build, uh, I hadn't done something like that before, and so I spent a lot of time, I measured everything like three times before I cut everything. Uh, but we are really, really pleased with the end result. The space feels so much brighter, it feels so much bigger, so much cleaner, but more importantly for us, it's more usable. We've gained so much utility in this desk, and it's just a much nicer place to be working. So we're really, really pleased with the outcome of this. But the real test will be in a few days time when we hit the road again, and honestly, we can't wait to get out and explore this country in our newly remodeled RV. We love our new remodel, but what do you think? Leave us a comment down below and let us know maybe which bits you think are your favorites or you'd like to learn more about how and why we made those changes. And also let us know if you're thinking about remodeling your RV. We always love to see the great things that people do in their RVs, so drop us a comment down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, then hit that subscribe button for more great videos. So, we can probably cut the muscle band in place. So I put it on, and then I'll just, with my knife, score around it. But the tile's gonna be harder. Now, I've got a fair amount of leeway. Like, the box is quite a lot bigger than that. I mean, muscle band was so hard to cut, even on the- The recommended instructions, Trim in place. This is the easiest and fastest way to install mat. Okay. So. <laughs> Go once in your lifetime. You read the instructions. <laughs>